welcome back. And today it's going to be all about excavators and excavator modifications that I've done. Today I want to go over some different things that I've changed on my excavator because I either needed a better way or found a better way or even just because I didn't like something. And we're going to do some real quick uh, things that go over with this machine and it's a Bobcat E60 R2 series and some of the things that I've done with it. And I guess we'll start off with uh, the front blade on this thing. And we're also going to talk about a front backfill blade that I've made for it and how I use it and the benefits for it. But first off, we'll talk about this uh, uh, higher guard, if you will, that I've added on here. And this came off of my uh, original skid loader that I had. And it was a case 90 XT. And what this was, was a spill guard that gets bolted to the top of a bucket for the uh, skid loader. And what it does is just as it sounds, it's a spill guard. And it keeps materials when you come in, take a big scoop, curl your bucket back. This is what keeps the material from falling back in behind your machine. Or if you take a look here, if you were to have a bucket on here, the material that would fall back into the step area or, or the cylinder area, things like that. But uh, I, I looked at this and, and every time I run my excavator, I always have piles of dirt that end up over laying on the uh, frame portion of the, the front blade. And one of the biggest things is, is you constantly have rocks, dirt, and debris falling over onto that cylinder, which is my angle cylinder. Not every machine has an angle cylinder, but this one does. And that was one of the other reasons why I wanted to make sure I had something there to protect that couple things with this blade is this guard wasn't put on to push extra capacity. It was put on just to keep dirt and materials from spilling over because these blades are really, they're only about 18 inches tall and most every mini excavator out there that has a front blade on it, they're not very tall. They're not meant for pushing a ton of dirt. But one thing that most people do is, is when they're doing their last little bit of cleanup or whatever the last little portions of dirt they're trying to pick up or sticks or something they'll bring their bucket in to the blade curl it to get that last little bit because it just makes it easier to use that blade to have it push into the bucket so what i did was i took that spill guard and i cut the back wing because it used to come way out here the way it would sit on a skid loader bucket and I cut it remounted it into the tie down hole on each side and it's just bolted through here uh, like a compression style uh, clamp on there if you will and then I put four bolts drilled and tapped four bolt holes in the top of the blade across the top and that just keeps it on there so it I would imagine if you tried to really really push something heavy duty it would probably bend that or break that off. So that's why you don't use this as something to, to push a ton of extra dirt with. And again, that spill guard on there keeps all that dirt and mess from getting pushed into here. Now, whether you have a, an angle front blade or just a standard blade, it still does the same thing. It keeps that dirt from spilling over the top of it, just like you would on a uh, skid steer or track loader or whatever you might have it keeps all that dirt from pushing back into where you don't want it so that's one of the modifications that i've done to this machine that really it makes a world of difference uh, one thing that i've done is you can see this little arm here on the back of the machine or inside the controls of the machine and what i did is this is just a little bracket i made and I welded a uh, 3 8 drive extension socket on the end of that. I cut it down, went over to Harbor Freight, you can buy them for six bucks, but bought an extension and welded it onto the, the bracket that I made and just found a place inside the cab that would allow me to pick up off of a factory bolt. 
Uh, so I bolted it onto there, and it really is a is an excellent place for it because it's out of the way. But the the key to this thing here, and I'll show you why and what it does, is this is the other half of the 3 8 drive swivel, and I pounded that pin out, and I drilled a hole through a extension of a uh, another 3 8 extension. It's a six inch extension, and when I need it it's always right here I don't go searching through a toolbox I don't have to look for a 3 8 wrench anything like that it just stays right here so anyhow there is a place for it it stays within the machine it stays in the cab and it never gets lost so we'll take this and this swivel and this is what I use to turn the hydraulic function for what I would call the third function uh, this machine has hydraulic lines coming down for the thumb, but if I want to take and add and put my uh, hydraulic tilt on here, uh, you have to turn these two 3 8 square bolt heads to switch them from the thumb to a third function hydraulic. And what that does is it comes down and turns these on and turns off the thumb hydraulics. So... What I do is this 3 8 head fits perfectly in there, and this is why it's on a swivel, because if it was just set on a 90 degree, it would force you to always run down into one of these pipes or bang your knuckles. So this allows me to pivot it out, and then I can just take and turn that, and turn the other one real easy, and that switches it real quick to my third function here. And we just take this back, and clip it back on to the extension of the machine. Moving on, I want to show you, and these are a tool that I make, and uh, I sell them at our local Bobcat dealer, and they can be used for any machine out there, whether it's Hyundai, Bobcat, Kubota, Cat, any, any mini excavator that uh, you have to clean the tracks out. And I actually despise those round nosed tiny little shovels because they just don't do what you need to do when you're down in here trying to clean your tracks out you get those things packed full of mud you shove that shovel in there and what do you do you got to pull it back out so when you shove the shovel in pull it back out most of the mud is still sitting there i mean you got to literally tilt it and pull it and it just it's just not the best setup and you know it's another one of those things I looked at and said well there's got to be a little bit better of a way and what I did was I created this track pick or track cleaner if you will and these are just some rubber mounts that I got off of Amazon and they hold this particular tool but anyhow picked up a piece of cheap aluminum angle so it wouldn't uh, rust or I didn't have to worry about painting it or anything like that and then I just mounted these simple garden tool rubber straps and what these are used for is generally most people use them on their landscape trailers for putting a, uh, a rake or a broom handle in there and then uh, latching it down so they can travel around with it but back to this tool this track cleaning tool and this particular one's got a different end on it for my purpose of this machine so being that I make them I can change up whatever I want and I use this track cleaning tool for whatever dirt might get down inside of the front blade area and I don't get much now with that thing on it but anyhow it's great for cleaning off all these different areas you get clumps of mud that get stuck on your front blade you can come in here and you can clean it scrape it off you can actually do this you're up in the woods or wherever this tool is always with the machine so it makes it very very nice and very handy to have some kind of cleaning tool with the machine and one of the main reasons is, is let's say I'm up here in the woods and it's a sloppy muddy day and I've got my tracks just full of dirt and I don't like to bring it back down here on the, the pad or for some of you guys out there that uh might bring it back onto your gravel pads or where you keep it or loading it onto your equipment trailer I can go in here and now I can use this track cleaning tool to uh, 
to go in here and pick or clean out any of the dirt and it works for good sloppy mud that's caked up in there you hook it up behind it and pull it straight out so it works really really nice for cleaning off your track and getting into those really hard to reach tight areas like if you have mud caked up behind your sprocket you can get this thing back in behind your sprocket and get that all cleaned out picked out and all the mud that would get down in and up behind the rear drives on this and I left a little mud in here so I can show you how reach up in there and it just is very easy to get this cleaned out way easier than any kind of little shovel that you would have so there I've got the the back final drive on that cleaned out and can clean this one out just a good little push forward and they're cleaned out so something simple like this just a track cleaning tool that I've come up with and uh, they're very handy use the little rubber strap strap them back down and that tool doesn't go anywhere when I'm up running the machine and here is a modification that I've done that I absolutely hate these foot pedal controls for these machines. And I think 99% of any mini excavator has these foot pedal controls. What I hate about these is when you have this back pedal flipped back and these, these pivot or move. And when you're driving this machine forward, and this pedal is down yeah I know you can flip it forward and drive it that way but you find yourself when you're in a tight area and you're doing quick maneuvers back and forth and jockeying around you don't want to just see, keep kicking this thing back and forth to be able to run into reverse so normally you always have the back heel pedal in the out position and when you push forward to go forward it forces your heel way up and it's just a very uncomfortable feel when you're doing this all day long and short of just flopping this back and forth I decided what can I come up with for a pedal system on this that just is not uncomfortable and what I did is I made or welded up some new pedals that you push down here with your foot okay so when you want to go forward, you go forward. And then when you want to go backwards, you just raise your toe and it pulls that arm backwards. It's so much faster, so much easier, and you never have to flip this stupid pedal. All right, so to give you a better look at this, I've got my heels comfortably on the, the floor of the cab stick my toes up in here and whether I, I made sure I spaced them out to fit my my work boots when I run the machine so there's a little bit of a little bit of gap here when I wiggle them up and down but anyhow push down and you can see the levers up here push down and then as I lift my toe just like you would with the regular pedals it allows me to turn but here is the biggest advantage Let's say I want to hurry up and go backwards. Just pull them back with my feet. Push them forward. And the whole entire time, my heels have stayed planted on the cab of the machine. And it's in a comfortable position. Keep in mind that when you push down with the factory pedals, it forces your heel to come up with that back heel plate up under your foot. So this way I keep my feet on the pedals and I want to go backwards, I want to go forward. There's no monkeying around with kicking up the, the pedals or flipping them back every time you want to go somewhere. Here's what I've done with this back blade that my dad used to have. It's a, uh, a quarter inch thick. And it's very similar or what would be very similar to a back blade, a scraper blade for a three point hitch type of system. 
but I don't originally think way back like I said 40 50 years ago I don't think that's what it was used for it was some kind of uh, heavy-duty metal plow blade and what I've done to this thing or what makes it unique is first off I had to uh, buy the special X change hydraulic coupler and I bought that from a fellow who who makes these up for specifically for Bobcat machines and then I had to go in here and scallop out or contour two pieces of heavy-duty three-quarter inch steel blocks and I welded them to the uh, exchange bracket itself and then welded it to the back side of the plow so I've got it welded on at those points but I also needed to create a little more support because these machines are so strong and so powerful that it would just basically buckle this this blade itself it would bend it in half if I'm out here so I took and I welded on some extra support on the top with some gussets or some supports in along the front of the plow or blade edge so I'm supported up top and then with a little triangulation some uh, angle iron that goes out to the point of the end of the blade back to the end of the attachment here so that holds it from basically banana shaping the, the plow as I'm using it and then there's another heavy duty angle piece all the way along the bottom edge of it to uh, keep it from buckling there so I've used this many times and haven't done any damage to it yet and for what I use it for really you shouldn't have any damage but it's great for backfilling ditches if you want it is I don't know if I said it yet but it's five feet wide from over here to over here five feet wide so it makes it really really nice for backfilling any kind of ditches that you have but that again is not the attention of this thing you guys might be looking at this and wondering what in the world is this hanging down off the end of it well I took a piece of heavy duty C channel and the bolt holes that were in the back of this blade I've used those the bolt holes for the cutting edge this has got a replaceable cutting edge on it and I've used those bolt holes to attach this angle or this piece of C channel and what I did was I sandwiched in between the blade and this C channel an old excavator track and what that excavator track does is it acts as like a squeegee when I'm in the woods and I'm cleaning up grasses debris sticks twigs and everything else that uh, accumulate over time but the best point about this thing or the whole reason for this track is it doesn't allow the metal edge down here there's about three or two inches from the metal edge to the bottom of the rubber track that doesn't allow it to dig into the roots of trees and what I didn't want to do was go in there cleaning up the dirt cleaning up the woods and having the metal edges on this thing constantly ripping and pulling roots out so this rubber excavator track it was just a junk old track that a buddy of mine had so it's pretty unique I don't know that I've ever seen anything else like this out there in the market I don't know that you can buy anything like this I was watching Mike Morgan with uh, Outdoors with the Morgans here last week when he got his brand new uh, grapple bucket for his machine and he goes out and he's cleaning up his back woods around his uh, mini cabin and all that and I thought well I'll just throw this up here and uh, maybe give Mike another idea of something that he can go through the woods with even wider so it, it literally I mean it's it's three buckets approximately three buckets wide depending on what size bucket you have and does the the clearing and cleaning that much faster but with a twist it does not destroy the roots around the trees when you're getting in so I guess enough with the talk and we're gonna take a trip down into the woods
can see that it makes it nice. And this is why the rubber track is on the bottom, is I can come in here, and yeah, it pulled a little bit of the bark off of those roots there, but it didn't cut the roots. It can go right up along edges of the trees, and it's not cutting any of the roots out. It's just cleaning up the dirt, like a, like a squeegee, if you will. Go down through and come over here, and you can see, just, you can get it right around in the, with the having that track off the edge gets right up and around to the edges of the trees so we've cleaned this area up here and then the whole way up the hillside I've cleaned up and why I do that is all of these trees in here in the woods the way the winds blow is along this tree line all the way along here and as it goes down to there all the leaves blow out into the yard here and I like to try and keep them cleaned up. So in a later video this fall, I will show you the blower system that I have. And it's uh, pretty impressive. Works very well. But now with having all the debris, the sticks, the tall grasses, the weeds, and everything kind of out of this tree line, it allows me to blow the leaves through here and back into the wooded portions that I really don't care where there's leaves laying but it gives this really nice look up through here of it all being cleaned and well manicured all the way up through the woods and along the trail line and yeah the piles like there's a pile right up here and there's the pile down here that we just cleaned up what I'll do is just come by with my skid loader and pick them up take them over and dump them into the woods that back blade with the rubber excavator track on it really makes it nice for cleaning up the ground around here. It doesn't tear anything up, doesn't dig dirt out. It's not like anything with teeth on it that it digs down into the dirt. It basically just sweeps, or again, squeegees the ground to get it all cleaned up. done now clearing out the uh, woods area there and you can see now how it just cleans all this up after the the mess of sticks and trees and tall grasses and what it's done for being able to clear that up and now I can get the tractor in here and mow out any of the taller stuff and you saw what it did with uh, this stilt grass that was over here basically just cleaned it right off the ground and there's nothing left there and hopefully the I know it'll keep coming back but that's uh, it, it cleans it off and makes it pretty nice <laughs> 